Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you today about self-looping. A lot of people seem to ask of my various projects, can you loop it, can you loop it? A reason I haven't been going in that direction is if you've been following me for a while, so a lot of my earlier videos, I've demonstrated just that, maybe over 10 times actually different methods, but all variants of uh, the Bedini setup. And what I'm trying to do is find better ways, easier ways, as much as the Bedini setup works, it's more for a, a novelty, a conversation piece to prove that these systems can work. As far as practicality, I've said it before, having a big wheel the size of a half of a garage for 300 watts, paying three, four thousand dollars of labor for money-wise just doesn't make any sense. So that's why you're not seeing people with Bedini wheels in their backyards. Needless to say, the hobbyists could build them and they will work. But the issue is they're very difficult to tune. They require constant supervision and always tinkering with it. But needless to say, it does work. And I've demonstrated that. Some people have been able to replicate my systems while others have had more difficulties. So I thought maybe I'd explain something that maybe some folks didn't quite get the first time. So um, what's very, and people seem to want to self loop a lot. It seems to be an active topic. I'm interested more into something that I could put out, you know, the. Uh, the big wattage, you know, so um, easy too, you know, and not something where that requires to be a rocket scientist to uh, operate. So with that said, that's why I'm always researching and experimenting with, uh, I've been really enjoying the one wire method lately and the quantum energy generator and figuring out the various controllers for that and I've been sharing with all of you folks. So with that said, um, let me explain the self-looping here. Um, and I, again, I don't really go because the thing is, what's the point of redoing the same videos I've already did before, just proving the same thing over and over? I would never move on to other things. So with that said, it's not because, oh, it's not going to work or I'm trying to, to be deceptive. It's literally, I've done it like over 10 times. And if you don't believe me, go into my history and scroll down into the first videos and you'll see them all there in my introductionary. So um, with that said, one of them that really got people uh, talking early days was the 100 watt light bulb using the Bedini setup. So I'm going to explain you how that and similar systems can work, folks. And the thing is, everybody wants to self-loop, right? But it's a very difficult to self-loop because the energy we're dealing with here is not really compatible with the energy that that runs our household items, for example. So like Bedini had the right idea where instead of trying to loop it, folks, if you can, try and get 10 for the price of one. You know, Bedini was able to charge all those batteries for the price of one. Instead of trying to loop the battery, work on something like a capacitive discharge motor that will take advantage of that and run a real mechanical work without actually having to convert it. Needless to say, you don't have to do that, but that's the best way of doing it. There will be a loss, but we can transduce part of it back to a traditional um, electrical current with some, difficult, with some difficulty. It is manageable, but it's difficult to do that. And I will show you what the issue is when dealing with traditional power here. Again, with traditional power is closed loops, so we have to remember that's mostly going to hurt us a lot, even at the controller, okay? So here's the basic setup of, we're going to try and draw a nice battery here. That's going to be my 12 volt battery here. This is the plus, this is the minus, okay? So we're going to go ahead and connect our controller or modulator or pulser, whatever you want to call it, right here. We'll just call that uh, pulse with modulator just to keep it simple for now. This could be a Bedini, this could be a flyback, whatever you want, okay? It's your driver. So what we do with that is then you've got your big coil here. is our big loop that we're pulsing. This could be a mechanical Bedini motor or a solid state device, it doesn't matter, that's the coil we're pulsing. 
And here, this is the plus, so it's the opposite for the backing MF. So we've got our diode here. Like that. And then right here, let's say we're going to have our capacitor right there. And we'll just call this, I guess, C1, and we'll say it's 10 UF, okay? So the capacitor charges, this is very traditional setup, okay? I'm not talking about the one wire or anything, just I want to get to the self-looping issue here. So you got your C1, 10 UF, and let's say this is charging to um, 100 volts typically. And then what we want to do, folks, is dump it back into the battery. Now, the reason we're charging a cap is because, as many of you know, with these designs, simply looping it back creates a short. You can't do that directly. So one way to deal with that is we can put an inverter here, if we want, to give us our AC. And then our transformer it could be any Walmart 12 volt transformer and that feeds so this way here you'll be completely isolated but uh, with the cap dump you don't need to do that as Bedini stated I'm just giving you all the options here or many of them so you can relate with what your setup is so anyways we're doing direct from the battery right now which is the most traditional setup post wit modulator is driving or coil or collecting the inductive kickback C1 10 UF 100 volts so now the cap dumps I guess we have our cap dump whatever that controller that's going to be so we're just going to call it cap dump cap dump and thanks to the cap dump folks we're able to go back into the battery here just trying to make it understandable a little bit so this setup here technically is what everyone would expect as a self loop but there's an issue with those who just do it this way is we are still stuck with a closed loop right here. So the normal laws of energy, the convert the conservation of energy folks, that's going to happen here. And one way to prove this is the pulse width modulator, try and build your own. It's very easy. You could build like a jewel thief. There's plenty of uh, circuit diagrams online. Find one that would be audio. There's plenty of them. The only difference is you had a couple capacitors to adjust the frequency and it'll be in the audio range. Put a little speaker on the output so you actually hear the tone. Don't worry, you'll still have back EMF. It works great at 1K or whatever, even more. So um, the, audio, the, the reason I say audio is so you can hear it. I wanna make it obvious what's going to happen if you do the experiment, okay? So have this be the audio and have a speaker connected on this as well okay so you have your speaker or your piezo whatever so you can actually hear the tone that's good you don't want something big here because you don't want to dampen it would be even better if you actually do a little coil around here just to get but my point is whatever you want to do Hook up that little speaker so you can hear the tone, okay? Get your cap dump, set it up, you know, nothing major, you just want to experiment. Make it dump at, uh, you know, 15 volts or something, okay? So what, whichever way you want to dump this, activate it, and you'll see it dumping, whichever indicator you have. But also listen to the tone. You'll have a steady tone. It might be something like me. And as soon as your cap dumps into the what you want to be the battery, 
Listen carefully to the tone. Every time you dump, let's say it's one dump a second, your tone is going to start sounding like a uh, siren. It's going to go me, 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 me. And you know what that me is? That speed up is when the cap dumps back into the battery. So you hear what's going on, folks? Instead of the energy, that precious energy we recycled, we gain. Instead of going into the battery, the battery is ignoring it and it's going back into our circuit. The circuit is seeing an increase energy. It speeds up the oscillator. So the oscillator eats up the dump as you're being sending it back. Why? Because the loop here is closed at 100% of the time. And trust me, when you've got a high voltage discharge going into a high impedance battery and it sees your pretty circuit here at much less it's just going to go yeah i'm going to go here i'm going to go here and i'm going to go like this and next thing you know there's less in the battery so tom bearden was right there's more to it than just self-looping and that's why a lot of people essentially fail unfortunately past this step so tom bearden had it and everybody ignored what he had to say break the symmetry break the symmetry People took it well when we're talking about pulsing the back EMF side, but we need to do it all around, including our pulse width modulator. So you're saying, okay, well, this is running on DC. How the hell do we do that? Easier said than done, right? The way I was doing it, folks, this was crude, but one way, and this is why the 100 watt worked on my original setup is for me to break the symmetry, it was crude. There's better ways, I'll show you how. But what I did is I put it a voltage regulator here that dropped my whole thing to five volts here. Now, everybody saw the regulator and I told them it was because I, I wanted to help consume the current. Now you might say regulator is usually a bad thing because what a regulator does, folks, is when you got a lot of fluctuations, it makes up for that. But the fluctuations, the extra that doesn't get used, it dumps it to ground. So when you have a lot of fluctuations, your regulator is going to work harder and it's going to actually wasteful. But if you've got a relatively stable, low current circuit that doesn't fluctuate, the regulator will actually do you pretty good. So that was my quick way of um, breaking the um, symmetry, so to speak, with the voltage regulator here. But it's, it's very crude, so it's not the best way of doing it, folks. But at least it's something, right? So let me show you what's the best way of doing it you would have a second pulse width modulator controller here. So that's your controller. Okay. And what you want to do is this will pulse your input power here. You want to chop it up. So what you're going to do is, let's say, because obviously we don't need all the current of this 12 volt battery to run a simple little oscillator or pulse with whatever it is you're running, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have the controller give this maybe 1 to 2% duty cycle square wave. And that's our square wave output right here. And that charges another small capacitor like that we'll say this is C2 and this will give us our 12 volts DC let's say this is 0 0.2 UF okay but much less uh, current because we don't need the full and we're pulsing it okay so now what we're doing is we're, we're literally switching the input completely off for a moment and turning it on for only a small time. And now this 12 volts here can come in and replace this section right here and become the actual 
So now you see what's going to happen is when we're going to cap dump this back into the battery now, we're not going to detect this circuit because the controller here is literally breaking it. We're literally disconnecting the load from the circuit while the circuit allows to re-gauge the battery. This way here, when your oscillator cap dump sends it back to the battery, it won't go back into the controller and just eat it up. It'll go into this cap here, which is being pulsed. This is breaking, literally turning off for a lot, like 98% of the time. So for, you know, 98% of the time, the battery is free to receive the cap dump charge without having that counter fight, right? This is what Tom Bearden meant. And as long as you follow this concept, you're gonna become very, very much more successful at maintaining that charge in the battery, okay? So the same thing could be said if you wanna take it a, a step further with the one wire system. If you have a high voltage oscillator, it does like those little modules that work at 1.5 volts, won't work at 12 volts, but if you, at the right frequency, at the right low pulse, it'll be give you that voltage just enough to drive that little module at very high voltages which will give you your inductive kickback which will charge your cap and this is it breaking the symmetry in tom bearden terms and asymmetrical regaging so um just thought i'd clarify this and that's basically oh something else i have to say this brings us to the other devices you know, when we see the cathogens with the inverters and whatnot, and a lot of people have a hard time replicating it. Well, what these people are not telling you is the inverter is more than just an inverter. If you understand what I'm talking about, they're using the inverter to break the symmetry. But you see what the problem is, if it's a normal inverter, it'll either be square wave or sine wave, which means this is what you're going to get, right? this being in the middle here, roughly speaking, okay? So you're not really um, chopping it up, you're just altering the field. So what happens is the inverter is, what's driving this is actually a closed loop. So what they don't tell you is the inverter is actually modified. Yes, it's 60 hertz, but this is what it's giving you now. They modify it as a 50-50 where the other 50 is not on like it normally would, but instead they have 50% square wave positive right here at 60 hertz. So now this feeds their various coils and whatever and it's a lot easier to put it back into the battery because, you know, half the time, your battery is free to receive that load. So just trying to clarify things, folks. So just showing you what I know. Hopefully it's not uh, inaccurate. So with that said, have yourselves a great day.